Hello, I'm Chris Anderson and I'll be your teacher today. To start the lesson, I'd like you to think about situations where people give you information. They tell you information, so information that you need to remember. Now, if like me, you might have a bad memory and you forget things quite easily, what I'd like you to do now is think about how you can check this information. So maybe you remembered it, but you're not exactly 100% certain. How can you check for this information? If the person who gave you this information is standing right there, you can ask them to tell you again. But maybe, if time has passed, you would like a more convenient, faster way just to check what you think you know or don't know already. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is a form of questions in English that can be used to check for information, whether or not it's true or not, whether or not we've remembered it properly or not. And we can also use these questions to ask for agreement. Now, this might seem like a very broad general area, and in fact it is, and also these questions are very small. They're like little tags, and in fact we call them question tags. So, let's have a look. First of all, subject plus affirmative sentence. The word affirmative means not opposite, and the negative tag follows the affirmative sentence. Also, we can swap it around, so subject plus negative sentence with affirmative tag. What we're going to be looking at now is examples of these questions in the present. For example, you're English, aren't you? So here we can see the affirmative sentence with the negative tag. And this sentence is checking the nationality of this person. We want to know if this person is English. Maybe we don't know, or maybe we can't remember and we would like to check. You aren't a doctor, are you? So this time the pattern, negative sentence with affirmative question tag. And again, we're checking. Is this person a doctor or not? Have I remembered correctly? I know somebody told me, but I want to check. She isn't from here, is she? So again, we're checking. Is she from here or not? You don't smoke, do you? Now here, we've got the negative regular form with the verb. So the tag, the affirmative tag this time, is do you. And so far you'll notice the, how the sentences mirror each other. Are, aren't, aren't, are, and so on. You play a musical instrument, don't you? Now this is an important one to remember, because as you can see, this is just a regular verb. So when we use regular verbs in the question tag structures, the tag, if it's negative, is don't you. And as you saw before, you don't plus verb, do you? Also, if we look at the final sentence, this person is checking whether or not they're late. So they say, I'm late, aren't I? This person doesn't know the time, and they're checking whether or not they're late by using question tags. So we've looked at question tags in the present. Now we're going to look at question tags in the past simple. So again, the structure is very similar, subject, with the affirmative sentence, followed by the negative tag, or the other way round, subject plus negative sentence, followed by the affirmative tag. For example, he was a sailor, wasn't he? So again, we're checking, but we're just checking information in the past using the question tag structure. In this case, affirmative, followed by negative. You went to bed late last night, didn't you? So again, this time affirmative, followed by negative, checking the information in the past. They weren't happy with the film, were they? So again, you can notice the pattern, the mirror image between weren't, were, went, just a verb this time, with didn't and was, wasn't. You didn't know any of the answers, did you? So checking, checking in the past whether or not this person knew or didn't know the answers. He said it was okay, didn't he? So if you remember from the present question tags, when we use a verb with no other grammatical influence, we use do in the present, in this case did, and in this case, because the affirmative sentence, we use didn't. She had a bath, didn't she? Checking whether or not this person had a bath. One thing to think about here, if we want to use question tags in formal situations, we don't use contractions. So wasn't would be was not, didn't would be did not. Usually, though, we use question tags when speaking, so the contractions are fine. So now we're going to look at more complicated forms of question tags, specifically question tags in the present and past perfect. 
Now, the rules are similar to the ones we've seen before. That is, we still use the affirmative sentence and it's followed by the negative tag. And if we use a negative sentence, it's followed by an affirmative tag. So as you can see here, subject plus affirmative tag sentence in the present or past perfect, followed by a negative tag. Subject plus a negative sentence in the present or past perfect is followed by an affirmative tag. For example, you've traveled a lot, haven't you? So, so far, so simple, right? Well, yes, structurally, but there's also another very important detail to remember when we're using question tags, and it's to do with intonation. In this case, rising intonation or falling intonation. So, to show you what I mean, I'm going to say this sentence twice, and I want you to see if you can notice the difference. You've traveled a lot, haven't you? You've traveled a lot, haven't you? So, I hope you noticed that the first time I said this sentence, the intonation fell. And then the second time, the intonation with the question tag rose. Now, this changes the meaning of the question tag. So, for example, if the intonation falls, that means you know the answer. That is to say, you're checking the information that you have in your mind at that time. If the intonation rises with the question tag, you don't know the answer. That is to say, the question tag is an actual question. You want to actually know the information because you don't have it. So, for example, again, she hasn't done that before, has she? She hasn't done that before, has she? So, the first time I said that question, I wasn't sure whether or not she had done it before. I had no information. I needed the person I was asking that question to tell me. The second time, falling intonation pattern, I was checking. I'm pretty sure she has done that before, but I would like some confirmation from somebody else to make sure. So, when we ask question tags in the past perfect, it's exactly the same. He had seen it, hadn't he? Or, I could say, he had seen it, hadn't he? And again, falling intonation pattern with the question tag, meaning I'm pretty sure, but I want to check. Rising intonation pattern, meaning I'm asking a genuine question. I have no idea. Can you help me? Can you tell me? They hadn't been to the shops, had they? Or, they hadn't been to the shops, had they? So again, falling intonation pattern, meaning I think they've gone to the shops, but can you just remind me, please? Or, with the rising intonation pattern, I don't know where they are, I would like somebody to tell me. So it's very important to remember rising and falling intonation when you're using question tags in English. So we can also use question tags to talk about the future. And again, the pattern which was pretty familiar to you by now, subject, affirmative sentence, this time in the present modal or future, followed by, of course, the negative tag. Or subject with a negative sentence in the present or future modal with an affirmative tag. So, for example, you will be here tomorrow, won't you? Now again, don't forget those intonation patterns. So really what you should do is make it very clear to the person who you're speaking to by doing this. You will be here tomorrow, won't you? I'm checking with falling intonation, meaning I know you're going to be here, but I want to hear you say it. Alternatively, I could say, you will be here tomorrow, won't you? As in, I'm not really sure, can you let me know? So again, the difference is quite big in the falling and rising intonation pattern when it's used with question tags. So, it won't rain tomorrow, will it? Meaning, I saw the weather forecast, I'm checking with falling intonation, I'm pretty sure it's going to rain, but I just want to check with you first. Or, you're going to eat that, aren't you? Rising intonation, I don't know if you're going to eat it, tell me if you are or not. He's not going to watch it again, is he? I know he's going to watch it again, he always watches it again, and we know this from my falling intonation pattern because I'm checking. You can't swim, can you? So in this case, rising intonation pattern, I'm not sure if this person can swim or not. He shouldn't drive tonight, should he? We all know he shouldn't drive. You've seen him, you've seen him. We all know he shouldn't. I used falling intonation pattern to check the information because I know the answer. So in this case, he shouldn't drive. So, so far, we've looked at question tags, the small questions that we can put at the end of sentences to check for information or ask for agreement. 
and we've looked at the way that they work in the present, past and future tenses in English. We've also looked at the role of rising and falling intonation patterns in question tags, which is very important to remember because falling intonation with the question tag means you're checking information, you know the answer, whereas rising intonation pattern means you don't know the answer to the question. Your question tag behaves like a normal, regular, conventional question. These things are important to remember when you're using question tags in English. So now you can take the exercises that follow this lesson. Good luck.